This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon and Happy New Year. This is the first show of the series, Business in Hawaii. And it's the year of the wild boar. But today, we're going to be stimulated, excited, always looking for new business ideas, entrepreneurship, and how small business people really create really value in the economy and bring forth innovation for the people and community of Hawaii and globally, how to spread that around. And today, as your host, Ray Tsuchiyama, we have a guest, Andrew Lockwood. He is CEO and president of Pacific Islands Institute with quite an innovative business model in travel. And it's more than just travel. And it encompasses education. It encompasses really getting into the trenches and interacting with people, cultures in a community all around the Pacific region and more. Welcome to the show, Andrew. Mahalo, Ray. Thanks now, for me. Now, you're, you're the head of a company that actually is a family business or so intergeneration. Tell me who started it. Okay, um, our company is called Pacific Islands Institute. Uh, we're a tour operator based in Kaimuki. That was founded by my mother, Diana Lockwood, back in 1989. And when she started this company, uh, tours and tourism, yes. but she must have had a different vision or kind of, what makes your company unique? There are tour companies that do tours for people who want to see new places and things and uh, cultures. What is so unique about your company, Pacific Islands Institute? So our company is designed to allow people to experience a deeper, uh, a deeper experience of the places that they visit. Um, it's, it's not for people that are coming for just kind of what I call uh, sunburn and Mai Tai uh, tourism, but people that really want to engage with the culture, with the environment, and are usually traveling with a purpose. So we customize tours around that purpose. And when you say customization, you have a request for such a tour and you talk to the people, engage with the uh, tour attendees first, or do you propose that this is a tour that you should take and kind of shape it? Uh, what does that process uh, look like? Okay. So actually, most of our clients are organizations. Um, so we work with a lot of nonprofit organizations that have educational missions that they want to extend by traveling into the Pacific. Uh, we specialize throughout Oceania, Polynesia, Melanesia, Micronesia, etc. And so when they want to come into our area or are looking for ideas from our part of the world, uh, we propose to them, uh, we, we collaborate with that organization to find something that will be meaningful uh, to them uh, and, and make sense to do in our part of the world. Well, why don't we begin with the backdrop? <laughs> this backdrop is really exciting uh, okay. place. So what is what? What does this kind of tell uh, the um, viewers out there what your company is about by looking at this? Well, this is kind of a multi-layered photo. Uh, this is from the island of Ofu in American Samoa, in a difficult to reach uh, part of Samoa called the uh, Manua Group. Okay. Um, and we're looking towards the island of Olosenga. That's what you see uh, behind my head. And the reef in the foreground right. is part of a reef flat that's actually part of American Samoa National Park. So we, this photo was taken as uh, part of one of our programs that we do for the National Parks Conservation Association, where they take their members to various national parks. That's great. Can we have the first photo up, please, Rich? And, and uh, this is uh, an organization. Uh, where, where did this organization come from and how did they shape this experience with you? Okay, terrific. So what you see here is a group of students from, I believe it's the University of Arizona, that, uh, and in particular their Asia Pacific American Student Services um, organization uh, with inclusion of people from their Native American Student Affairs. 
So what we're doing here is we're visiting um, a fish pond, uh, Heia fish pond on right. Oahu, right, to be specific. Right, right. And as you can see, they're learning from one of the caretakers of the pond um, about about the history of the place and the concept behind uh, behind Hawaiian use of, of fish ponds. Now, before they came here, did they study at all about Hawaiian history or fish ponds in general, a specific one? You know, honestly, I think that's a nut that we're still trying to crack a okay. little better. Um, they're discussing, I think, more broadly native cultures okay. uh, back at, at the university, uh, and they really get their Hawaii experience in depth when they arrive. And regarding um, how did they come to have this particular right. program, the goal of this program that they're participating on, it's a five-night program. Wow. It would be longer, but students only have so much right, money. Right, right. Um, and um, and they're experiencing Hawaiian culture through right. service. Right. So they actually here are learning about the pond, but they also worked at the pond. And we met through uh, my our friend uh, Professor Buckley, Patrick Buff Buckley, at right. the uh, University of Bellingham, Western Washington, where I'm, I'm an alum, <laughs> and, and I advise the group. And and uh, he takes about ten students here and right. gives them a very in depth. Uh, in the trenches kind of um, immersion in Hawaii society, politics, economics, all kinds of issues, but they do study before coming here. Right. And, it's, uh, and they do some post-trip uh, um, analysis and papers and so forth. So it is a whole course, but it's, it includes travel. Right. You're right. So why don't we have the next one up? Okay, so here we have a, a family program. So it's designed for people. Th these are clients are primarily from North America. It's designed for uh, grandparents, uh, the parent generation, and the kid generation oh, right. through one of our clients called Road Scholar, right. which is a lifelong learning organization that focuses on people that are that are typically forty plus. Uh, and so here we are actually doing a make your own lau lau uh, as part of an experience that also included time in the lo'i and, uh, and, and hula, right. in more of kind of a backyard setting. And these are like three generations in one. So three like, generations, wow. yes, traveling together, learning together. But this is quite uh, interesting because I can see even for uh, tourists from Japan or mm. Korea oh, yes. or Taiwan or many places in uh, Asia Pacific would want to do this kind of, uh, kind of not uh, like you say, a sun and surf uh, relaxation vacation, but to learn something new and right. be immersed in it. Now, how do you find these places, or uh, do you have long relationships with uh, groups that would host these uh, groups when they come here? Yes, uh, well, we've been around for 30 years, so we do have a lot of relationships that are 20 years plus, and some, frankly, that predate our organization, because my mother did similar things uh, for 10 years prior to founding Pacific Islands Institute. Um, and basically, we, we just network through the community. We ourselves, in our head office, do not have the expertise to do, you know, to demonstrate these things in most cases, but our expertise is in knowing people that know these places and in having the, uh, the core mission to do it in as uh, in beneficial a way uh, as possible so that not only the visitors benefit, but also the community benefits. Okay, well, uh, next photo, please. Oh, this, this looks, uh, and where is this? Yes, this is in Tahiti. I won't have a lot to say about this one, but I will say that this is the University of Southern California oh. that was doing a similar thing to what we do here in Hawaii, where they were exploring uh, Tahitian culture through, um, through service. Yeah, right. through service. <laughs> and, and when you say service, uh, they're going to all kinds of uh, sites, uh, sure. uh, uh, cultural sites, and what do they do uh, that's uh, meaningful? Okay, so they did a variety of different things. Uh, one of the things they did was up in uh, historic, fantastically beautiful Papua Noo Valley in the middle of uh, the Tahiti Nui portion right. of Tahiti. Um, they helped pull Maikonia. They also helped tend some of the Lo'ikalo or the taro oh, terraces okay. there, including the one that was planted at the beginning of Malama Honua for the Hokulea voyagers. Wow. And that they, you know, they revisited Tahiti and were right. able to harvest on their way back. Uh, another thing that they did, it was around uh, the New Year's time frame. They participated in helping serve a local community, 200 people that were economically disadvantaged. 
Um, there's an organization there that basically does in Hawaii what we would call uh, uh, like an imu down there, right, uh, right, Maatahiti, right. Um, and they just help prepare and and serve the food. You're coming up with a lot of uh, Hawaiian um, historical, cultural, uh, culinary terms, and many of your uh, destinations involve uh, Pacific Islands, uh, yes. which are in the group of you know uh, Polynesia or Tonga and Samoa and so forth. Does uh, your upbringing and the fact that your organization institute is in uh, beautiful uh, Kaimuki in Honolulu and uh, have a sense of, 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 of Pacific Island and Polynesian culture, does it help you and give you more leverage when you talk to these groups from the outside, or outside meaning from the mainland or any, anywhere else, outside of Hawaii, that, that are seeking these experiences? That's an interesting question. I think, honestly, most of the people that we work with outside Hawaii are not really knowledgeable enough to be able to make uh, a decision uh, based on the way we talk and communicate with them on how, uh, on how much we know what we know. But we, it helps us when we're dealing with the communities because right. we do have an Oceania-wide perspective. Right, right. We can talk about, we, we, there are still certainly new places that we go to within the Oceania area um, although we've been to pretty much every place that, that there's regular plane service, there are always new opportunities right. there, and we're not in every place every day or sometimes even every year. But, um, but I think it does help when we work with uh, community members for them to understand that our, our mission and our approach and our, our knowledge of the area is on, on firm footing, at least right. at our level. Again, so, the so, experts come from the communities. Right, exactly. So, but uh, but when you go down to Tahiti or Samoa, Tonga, yes. there's a sense of familiarity. Absolutely. That, that, that you say you're from Hawaii, and therefore sure. you're you know you may not be expert in their cultures, right. but you're grounded in Polynesia. I right. mean, we are of the Pacific, <laughs> uh, South Pacific, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. in, in many ways, uh, and 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 uh, really enjoy uh, you know. Uh, a lot of things that um, uh, culturally, historically, are out there. Yes. Uh, but uh, it's it's interesting to note that many of your organizations come from the mainland, from yes. outside of Hawaii, right. and they use you as a conduit, as a liaison, as a kind of middle person to really uh, fulfill their uh, uh, objectives in, in travel and culture. Uh, do you do you have or do you? Uh, want more people from Hawaii to, and organizations to do this as well and go out to see our cousins in Rapa Nui or Tahiti or Samoa yes. or Tonga? Yes, I would love that. I have to say, uh, myself, I first went down to Fiji Tonga and Samoa yeah. on a three-week program that we were running for one of our clients. And this was in 1991. And I came back from that experience having learned a lot about Hawaii. Oh, well, and that was not something that I expected. Right, right. But by being down there and seeing people where the language is strong right. and alive and well and seeing village-based communities right. and everything that, that 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 means, learning about their history and their culture gave me a lot of perspective mm. to reflect back upon uh, Hawaii. And I, and I came back wanting to share specifically Hawaii's youth uh, mm. to share that experience with them. Let's hold that thought and explore it even further after we take this exciting break. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Choose to treat it with the help of a physical therapist. Physical therapists treat pain through movement and exercise. No warning labels required, and you get to actively participate in your care. Choose to improve your health without the risks of opioids. Choose physical therapy. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Welcome back to our exciting show. And we had this great um, uh, statement and, and analysis by Andrew just before taking a break on the experiences he had when he went off to our cousins in Fiji, Samoa, Tonga, and other places and came back to Hawaii 
with new insights about Hawaii, what could have been or how Hawaii could have preserved or sustained some things and in society and culture, uh, environment, but also other things that maybe other islands could learn as well from Hawaii uh, and in terms of uh, what we have uh, and, and share and kind of uh, cross, I guess, pollinate or have discussions on how Hawaii uh, evolved and, and uh, developed uh, through the years. Uh, and, and so we go back, isn't, that would be a really exciting area to explore uh, if people in Hawaii were motivated to take these trips. <laughs> True. And, and what, what, uh, what, you know, this is a platform uh, for you to really, you know, uh, uh, promote uh, your uh, uh, business model, uh, mm -hmm. but in the t same time, it's an educational model. In it, right. the same time, it's a political, social, cultural, it's an it's a all-encompassing model right. that you go beyond just, you know, going there and looking at things, but to really deal with what you just said, the experts in the community. Right. And they may have something that may have a great impact, uh, a positive on Hawaii itself. Yes. Uh, what, what do you feel is lacking? What, what do you have to do you know, to get this out there into the community? Oh, well, um, some of these are just basic business challenges that any business would, right. would face. For us, it's that uh, for the first 20 years of our existence, we were basically just continuing to serve our existing client right, base, right. picking up some additional ones by word of mouth, but not putting any real effort into trying to, to offer what we do more widely. Uh, about 10 years ago, my wife Karen and I, uh, we, we own the company together. Um, we decided that, you know, things were fine, but that our, our community benefit, which is one of the driving forces behind uh, what we do, was going to be limited at a certain level unless we invested some money in trying to do more marketing and sales and we could bring it to another level, in which case the communities would benefit more. And there's a variety of other benefits as well. So, so frankly, I think it's just we're lucky in that we're so busy that we're not growing the company more, but at the same time, we are taking steps to, to try to do that so that we can uh, meet our, our, our community benefit goal as well as work with more interesting people and places. I can't tell you how frustrating it is to uh, continually meet new people and learn about new places mm -hmm. and have a strong desire to want to work with them but to be limited by just not having enough clients. Right. So. Well, you go back to, uh, like I just said earlier in the program, about Asia-Pacific tourists uh, mm -hmm. from Japan or uh, Taiwan or Korea and other places, uh, or even Australia, New Zealand to Hawaii. And there must be uh, a strong desire to Absolutely. experience Hawaii at another uh, level. We in, believe in, so. In the community, that's number one. And if, if it's all possible to raise, you know, the amount of spending <laughs> per person uh, so you don't have mass tourism, uh, yeah. less impacting, less affecting the environment. Uh, right. uh, and also uh, that, that, we, that other places also have promoted in Costa Rica and, and other um, countries uh, sustainable ecotourism uh, to really uh, protect the environment, yes. but really give focused uh, tours. And I, I would say that this seems to be a great idea uh, that HTA should think about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, if HTA was sitting right here, what would you say to them? That's a great and yeah. politically charged question. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay. Um, I would just say that it is challenging. Okay. I mean, uh, you know, in Hawaii, we deal with issues of community. You know, we have communities on Oahu, for right. example, that, that are basically trying to close beaches and close places to, like Lani Kai. to visitors, yeah, like, like Lanikai, yeah, yeah. for example, Waimanalo. Uh, yeah. Ohanawa Bay was already restricted. Exactly, you know? been restricted right. for a while. And I so, used to go there camping when right. I was a kid. <laughs> so over tourism yeah. is a very, very right. uh, important important issue that right. not just Hawaii but a lot of places are right. dealing with on the news just recently was uh, na uh, Naples. Uh, was uh, Venice. 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 Yes. Venice. Thank uh, you. It was very Venice. big. Very big. Yes. yes. And, and Kyoto go... also in Japan. Uh, right. Um, you, you're, you're right. And, and in fact, uh, they should look at Hawaii for as, as we should be the leaders in, in trying to we should. Uh, uh, you know, sustain, have yeah. sustainable tourism yes. because of you know, 10, 11 million visitors right. a year. What kind of impact is that on the islands? Yeah, and, and I, I will freely acknowledge that what we do is a very boutique kind right. of product. We would face issues of scale. For That's example, right. yeah. 
If we take somebody to the National Park, uh, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, with a volcanologist, right. you can't have a volcanologist right. every single day of the Correct. year. Periodically, yeah. you can. Yeah. Um, and and, and there's a huge examples like of, that. Uh, uh, there's a huge amount of planning and, and logistics to get to uh, a tour. Right. <laughs> That's what you're saying. And yeah. the kind of experts that we employ yeah. um, have regular jobs, right? right? I mean, yeah. we just, we're in the visitor industry. But, but we pull from all industries and, and nonprofits, et cetera, right. schools, to provide expert speakers as well as our group leaders um, that accompany people. And, and you can't do that every day. So balancing yeah. that is very tricky. It, and, is, it is a big uh, next Next photo, please, <laughs> if there's one out there still. Okay, what's the, oh, this is Well, in, uh, here we are. We're actually, we're actually back on OFU, and okay. this is just showing, uh, you know, here's our, our people having a, a, a kind of grassroots uh, umu experience, yeah, the above-ground right. oven versus right. the imu we have here in Hawaii yeah. in grounds. Right. And you can see the, that the uh, Paka'o America Samoa, yeah, the yeah, uh, right. American Samoa National Park, wow. and they were participating, uh, they had the opportunity to participate from the beginning, the heating of the rocks, okay. all the way through the cooking and, of course, the dining. And okay. in the back, you can see somebody scraping... Uh, Coconut, either that or he's cleaning kalo. My eyes are not as good as they used to be. But, you know, when you look at this, it's familiar but different. <laughs> All right, from a Hawaii yeah. perspective, yeah. absolutely. It's familiar, but it's we different. do these yeah. things, but it's different. Yeah. Okay, next one, please. Oh. Okay, and here's another university group actually in the Lo'i, um, and they are probably helping weed here. Okay. So. Is this the uh, last one, or do we have any, any more? Oh, I, th I think we have a couple more. Okay, last one here. One more. That's wonderful. Oh. Okay. So here's one of our adult groups, yeah. lest you think we only do student groups. Right. Um, and of course, they're on Rapa Nui. Yeah. Um, the man on the front left with the white hat yeah. is famous uh, Rapa Nui archaeologist Sergio Rapu, who also right. has ohana here in Hawaii. Oh, sp they split oh, time. Um, and this is one of our groups that is uh, just learning from the best right. about right. Uh, the traditions of Rapa Nui. Um, and, and on this particular program, they spend um, six days or, or more there, whereas at least in the past and still to some degree in the present, um, Rapa Nui is often viewed as a three-day stay, wow. uh, Easter Island, Rapa yes. Nui. Yeah. But, um, but to get in the kind of depth that, that we want to get into, not just been there, done that, take right. the picture, but actually learn about the wow. people that created this yeah. and, and about their society and economy right. and everything as a whole, we spend more time. And what is your favorite place? I have many favorite places. Okay. It depends what you're looking for. Uh, Rapa Nui, I love Rapa Nui yeah. for its very tangible sense of mana, you know, right. the Hawaiian spiritual power yeah. uh, and the accessibility of so many fascinating sites. Mm. I love Papua New Guinea for oh. the feeling of stepping back in time right. and going right. to a place that's incredibly culturally and ecologically diverse. And then I love the Cook Islands oh. for a classic, uh, just relax, small scale, right. Spectacularly beautiful, very friendly people. Right, but right. every place we go to, I love for some reason. Yeah. So they're, they're, you know, one of the things we run into is people think the Pacific Islands are all kind of the same. Right, but right, of course, right. we know living in Hawaii that they're all quite different. But when, but when you say we know, you're making an assumption here. I've never been to Samoa. I've never right. been to Tonga. I've never been to Rapa Nui. I've yeah. never been to Tahiti. Okay. Uh, I mean, you know, for a lot of people on Oahu, the next stop after Diamond Head is San Francisco. <laughs> That's fair. Or Vegas. <laughs> or on Vegas, the direct flight. Yeah, or Vegas. Uh, you know, Clark County. So uh, you're you're right that um, uh, we should be part of this, you know, Pacific community. Yes. I mean, uh, our ancestors uh, came here. Um, uh, from other islands uh, to populate uh, Hawaii, uh, yeah. Hawaii Nui, but but uh, there isn't that um, interest, motivation, really to uh, study or uh, really wrap your hands, uh, you know, arms around other close close cu cultures, much closer than yeah. Arkansas or Montana. <laughs> They're much closer to us in many ways. You're quite right. Yeah. I, I think it is a, a growing perception of being part of the of the Pacific community. Um, but let's just say there's a lot of opportunity to continue to uh, to do more growth in that area. Oh, that's that's terrific. You know, and, and uh, how about it, it, for people in Hawaii? Are there things that we are missing uh, that are in our backyard? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I have to say uh, I feel yeah. very blessed to yeah. live in Hawaii. Of course, among my favorite places, Hawaii. I'm not right. trying to live anywhere right. else. Right. Hawaii is right. awesome. 
Um, Hawaii is such a rich place. There's yeah. so much going on. We get hints of it. We hear right, about right. it. We see it on TV. Yeah. We maybe read about it in a yeah. paper or something. But there's an incredible amount. Uh, um, I feel very lucky to be in the business I'm in right. because my day-to-day -day job is uh, is well, learning give, about give these different places. Give me an example places. of a person that uh, seems uh, you know that more people should be aware of and out there in in music or hula or culturally. Oh, of a person. Ooh, mm. I, that's too difficult. There, okay. we, let's just say we are uh, we are rich yeah. in fascinating people in Hawaii, uh, doing fascinating things, and so. Um, you know, read the Hanaho magazine. I'll give them a plug. I think they do a great job. They're actually, our, our neighbor in Kaimuki, uh, but but okay. uh, but I think they do a wonderful job for giving a taste of the things that are out there. Well, that's a good plug uh, for uh, my friend uh, Chris Pierce, is the uh, publisher. Yes. I've also published in uh, that magazine several times. Uh, so we're coming to the end, and I, I think you know there's tantalizing bits in here that people should in Hawaii should think more of and uh, that we could be doing a lot more in, like you say, intergenerational yeah. uh, travel. Of course, young people exploring on their own and, and coming to some great insights as part of, as you say, service-oriented travel. Yes. Uh, older people with a little, little more time on their hands could come back and see, you know, uh, just uh, say Rapa Nui or, or in Tahiti, some really interesting, uh, fascinating uh, slices of history and, and, and society. So I think it really is a, should be scaled up in many ways. And, right. and uh, this is a model, I think, that could be of uh, great interest in the future uh, and how to make uh, tourism much more sustainable in, 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 in uh, many, many ways. And thank you for being on the show. Pleasure. And we will have uh, another show soon. And this is a series for 2019. Business in Hawaii. I'm your host, Reitsu Shiyama. Thank you very much.